Hello there, welcome to the AS Further Maths video. Here we're looking at roots of cubics, so we can have a go at exercise 4b. So this follows on from the roots of quadratics video that you've probably just watched in exercise 4a, only this time we've got three roots and we've got a cubic equation. So let's get started, let's find out what those formulas are. They're very similar to the quadratic formulas. So if the cubic equation ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, so we need four letters this time, equals zero, has the roots alpha, beta, and gamma. So gamma is the third letter of the Greek alphabet, so it's going to be our third root. Then the following relationship can be written. So it's going to be, look at the left-hand side first, so it's going to be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, that's the cubic equation um, written uh, like this in the English letters, it's going to be therefore equal to, and then if the roots are alpha, beta and gamma, then we can put them into a factorised bracket like x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma, but there might be some multiple on the front of all the x's, so the x cubed term, so we'll just put an a there just in case. Eventually we're going to divide by it and get rid of it, but we'll just put it there for now. Um, just because it could be something like a 3x cubed or a 2x cubed, in which case we'd have to put a number at the front there. Now the next thing I'm going to do, just to show you where the formulas come from, is expand the brackets on the right-hand side and then group them strategically. So I'm just going to group all the x squareds together and all the x's together. So you can see I've grouped all the x squareds together here, factorised it all together, and I've factorised all the x's together there, those are all the x's, so I've pulled x out of them and factorised it into this term here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to divide by a, so this is what I get when I divide by a. So what I can now do is I can now compare the left and the right hand sides with each other. So let's start to do that. So this is my term here. If I look at what's in front of my x cubed term, I can see that I've got a 1 here and a 1 on the right hand side. So I've just proven that 1 is equal to 1. Lovely. Uh, let's all pack up and go home. Now, we've got three more formulas to find, so we'll look at the x squared term now. So it's going to be b over a on the left-hand side. So we'll have a look at this b over a term. And on the right-hand side, what's in front of x squared? It is minus alpha plus beta plus gamma. So therefore, we come up with the formula b over a equals minus alpha plus beta plus gamma, or minus alpha minus beta minus gamma. But generally what we do is just to help remind, remember it, is we're going to move the negative onto the other side. So actually this is the preferred way of remembering it, minus b over a equals alpha plus beta plus gamma. Now doing something very similar for the next uh, two coefficients, the x coefficient first, so that's going to be c over a equals alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. So the, what I refer to this as is the sum of the doubles. I've doubled the three roots in the, all the different ways they can be doubled up, and that equals c over a. So c over a equals the sum of the doubles. We're summing it, that's what the adds are there for, and then we've doubled them up in all the different ways that three terms can be doubled up in. And then the last one is going to be the sum of the doubles. And on the last term, just the coefficient at the end, the, the number, the constant term, that's d over a on the left-hand side, and it's minus alpha, beta, gamma on the right-hand side. Now let's move that minus onto the other side, just as we did with the first one. So it's minus d over a equals the triples. So minus d over a equals the triple roots minus d over a. So there we are. Those are the three formulas you need to remember. This one here, this one here, and this one here. So we've got some of the singles up here on the left-hand side, some of the doubles in the middle, and the triples on the right-hand side. Right, let's now use these formulas to now start having a go at some questions. Oh, what we'll do first maybe is compare the patterns with quadratics and cubics. So we've got these two formulas for quadratics, and we've got these three um, these three formulas for cubics. What can we spot? Well, we've got the sum of the singles in both the cases is minus b over a. So that's actually just a common formula that you can remember. Add all of your roots and you get minus b over a. And very similar for the doubles one. There's only one way of doubling up two roots. That's just alpha beta equals c over a. But there's lots of different ways you can double up three roots. And that is still equal to c over a. And what we'll find is there's a link into the quartic equations as well. Some of the singles equals minus b over a, some of the doubles is c over a, and some of the triples is minus d over a. And you can see it's going from negative to positive to negative as well. So start on b as negative, then alternate from there. 
Right, so let's start having a go at some questions then. So in this question here, we've got alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of the equation 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Find the values of alpha plus beta plus gamma, alpha, beta plus beta, gamma plus gamma alpha. C is alpha, beta, gamma. And D is a little bit of a tricky one, not one we have a formula for, but we might be able to combine a few formulas. 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta plus 1 over gamma. So in the first case, um, what would be sensible to do is identify what A, B, C, and D are. So A is going to be the first term, B is going to be the second term, C is going to be the third term, and D is going to be the fourth term, just like that. Then write out the relationships that you wish to use. So alpha plus beta plus gamma equals minus B over A. So to answer question A, we will now um, substitute in B and A. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus 3 over 2. You don't actually have to work out what the roots are, you, but you have worked out what alpha plus beta plus gamma is, and that is the question. So minus 3 over 2 is your answer for A. Moving on to the next one, the next relationship you're going to use is the sum of the doubles equals C over A, and just plug in the numbers C and A, so that's going to be minus 4 over 2, so that'll be minus 2. So minus 2 is your answer for part B. Moving on to the next one, that's the third formula that we've just discovered. Alpha, beta, gamma equals minus D over A, substitute in D, substitute in A, and you get your answer as, oh, that's not quite right, because D is clearly 2, so it should be 2 here. Uh, so minus 2 over 2 is minus 1. There we are, so it's now corrected itself. So minus 1 is your answer there. Now the D, D is a little bit of a tricky one because we don't have a formula for the sum of the reciprocals. So what we'll do then is we'll start doing some work with fractions. How do we add fractions together? We create common denominators first. So create common denominators and add those common denominator, add those fractions together now that we've created a common denominator. And what you'll see is you'll see that on the numerator we have a sum of doubles and on the denominator we have a triple. And we've got two formulas for that. We've got a formula for the numerator, formula for the denominator. Let's just use those. So it's going to be minus 2, because that's what the doubles is, over minus 1, that's what the triples is. So the answer to this question here is 2. Right, so let's now move on to the next question. Uh, the roots of a cubic equation, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals 0, are 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i, and gamma equals 2. Find the integer values a, b, c, and d. Um, helps, uh, it can help to rewrite the original equation slightly. So if I've got this original equation here, it might be helpful if I divide through by a, because then I can clearly work out what b over a is, what c over a is, and what d over a is. And if I've got any fractions left behind, then I can just times by that fraction value and move the a back to the front at the end. So in this question, it's helpful to use these relationships in effect backwards. So we're given that uh, we're given alpha, beta, and gamma, and we know that it will equal minus b over a. So let's add those roots together, and we get a value of four. So four is the value for minus b over a. So therefore, if I'm looking to input a b over a value into my cubic equation, the coefficient on x squared, then that's going to be minus four. So b over a equals minus four. So just keep that parked up the top there, because that's going to form part of our final answer. We're now going to look at c over a, so that will be the sum of the doubles formula. So sum of the doubles, that's going to be multiplying all of your roots together, all doubled up. So take alpha and beta, times them together, take beta and gamma, times them together, and take alpha and gamma and multiply them together. Expand your brackets, it shouldn't take too long, and you will get 9. 9, so therefore c is equal to... Um, Sorry, 9 is equal to c over a, so therefore the coefficient on x is going to be 9, it looks like. So I'll just park that up the top there, that's going to form another part of my answer. And now I'm going to move on to the final part of my answer, d over a. That's the triples, where you multiply all three of your roots together. So multiply all three of your roots together, and that's going to give you, remember that's minus d over a. Remember it's minus b over a, c over a, and minus d over a. That's going to give you 10, so therefore d over a is going to give you minus 10. So now that we know all three of these um, coefficients, we can now substitute them into the front of a formula, just like we're about to. So if we've got this cubic equation here, substitute in minus 4, 9, and minus 10 for those coefficients. 
And if any of these were fractions, you could just then times your equation by that denominator, times the whole equation by that denominator, and get rid of any fractions afterwards. So you're looking for integer values to be A, B, C, and D, whole numbers effectively. There we are. So we've got uh, B over A is minus 4, C over A is 9, and D over A is minus 10. Right then, everyone, it's your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here. I've got an easy one at the start and a more complicated problem solving one uh, on question seven here. So pause the video and it's your turn. Give these questions a go. Right, so let's go through these two answers then. So in part A, alpha plus beta plus gamma. Whoops, alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus b over a. And in this case, b is going to be minus 4, so that would be 4 for a double negative, and a is 7, so it's 4 over 7. Moving on to part b, the triples one, that's going to be minus d over a. So alpha, beta, gamma equals minus d over a. That's going to be 6 over 7, or minus 6 over 7 is our final answer there. Alpha cubed, beta cubed, gamma cubed. Now that's just going to be alpha, beta, gamma, all cubed. So that's going to be minus 6 over 7 cubed. And I'll need to remind myself of my cubes. I think 6 cubed is 216. No, I'll just, I'll just check in the calculator. I don't want to make a mistake here. So 6 times 6 times 6 is 260. I did get it right. It's going to be a minus because it will be a triple negative. And the last one is going to be 343. So there we are, that's the answer for part C, and D is the sum of the reciprocals. So if I start to add those together, I want to create common denominators, alpha, beta, gamma, on all of them. Now on the first one, if I've already got alpha on the bottom, it's only beta, gamma I need to add. On the middle one, it's only going to be alpha, gamma, and on the right-hand one, it's only going to be alpha, beta. So therefore, it's going to be the sum of the doubles over the triple, now the sum of the doubles we haven't actually worked out yet. The sum of the doubles is going to be c over a, so that'll be minus one over seven, and the triple is going to be we've already worked that out minus six over seven, <coughs> so that's going to equal one over six. So lovely, there we are. That's the answer to part to question three. Let's have now have a go at question seven. I'm just going to give myself a bit more space for question seven because it's a long one. So question seven is the cubic equation 16x cubed minus kx squared. The no x term plus one equals zero has roots alpha beta gamma. Find the values of alpha beta uh, plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma. That's the sum of the doubles. Now, the sum of the doubles I sometimes write as sum of the doubles, and that's going to equal c over a. And c, uh, if we've got a is 16, b is minus k, c is actually going to be 0, because there's no x term, so it's actually just going to be 0. And moving on to the next part, alpha, beta, gamma, that's the triples one, and that's going to be minus d over a, so that's going to be 1 over um, so minus 1 over 16. Minus 1 over 16? Yeah, because it's, uh, it's minus d over a, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Moving on to part b now, given that alpha is equal to beta, find the roots of the equation. So what I've got here so far, I've got three equations. I've got alpha plus beta plus gamma, which I'm now going to turn into 2 alpha plus beta plus so plus gamma, because I know that beta is equal to alpha, so I've just turned this beta into another alpha, so I've got 2 alpha plus gamma, and that's going to be equal to minus b over a, so that's going to be minus, minus k, so that would be k over 16, so therefore this is going to form my first simultaneous equation. The next simultaneous equation is going to be the, the sum of the triples, so that's going to be... Um, alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. And in fact, actually, now that alpha is equal to beta, I can do this a bit, uh, just a bit more simply. It's going to be alpha squared plus, uh, now we've got uh, alpha gamma. That's just going to stay as alpha gamma. But beta gamma is going to turn into alpha gamma as well because beta is equal to alpha. So it's going to be 2 alpha gamma. 
that's going to equal zero. So that's actually going to be an important of one of our simultaneous equations. And we've also got alpha beta gamma. And now that beta is equal to alpha, it's going to be alpha squared gamma equals uh, minus 1 over 16. Right, so now we have to somehow combine these three simultaneous equations to find the roots of the equation and work out what alpha, beta, and gamma are. So I think in the first case, we'll, I think we'll ignore this first one because that's got a K in it. So we'll just look at the second one now. So we'll look at equation two. And we might factorize it. So alpha, alpha plus two gamma equals zero. Now what this is going to lead to is either alpha is going to equal zero, in which case beta is equal to zero, and um, well yeah, we can't equal zero actually because we have the um, all the roots multiplied together should equal one, so therefore alpha can't equal zero. So uh, this is not going to be a solution, or potentially this bracket will equal zero, alpha will equal minus two gamma. Right, so now that we know that's from equation two, I'm now going to use equation number three, and that's alpha squared gamma equals minus one over 16. And that is going to, um, if we substitute in alpha is minus two gamma, then that's going to simplify to four gamma cubed equals minus one over 16. And if I then divide by four, so gamma cubed actually, because I'll have two gammas from this gamma alpha squared and another gamma, so it'll be alpha, it'll be gamma cubed. So gamma cubed equals minus one over 64. So therefore gamma is going to equal minus one over four. And now that gamma is minus one over four, I can work out alpha because that is going to be minus two times this value. So that'll be positive a half. And beta is also going to be positive half. Right, so there we are. That's the three roots there we've worked out. So that's the answer to part B. And now let's have a look at part C. Therefore, find the value of K. Well, now we'll go to equation number one. And that's going to be two lots of a half. So that'll be one plus gamma, which is minus a quarter will equal k over 16. So that's going to be 3 quarters um, equals k over 16. <coughs> um, <coughs> so therefore k is going to equal 12. Is that right? Does that make sense? So uh, 12 over 16 simplifies to 3 quarters. Yeah, that does. Yeah, good. So there we are. That's the answer for this question here. Question 7 was, was quite a long one, quite a problem solving one, quite a, a simultaneous equation-y kind of problem. And that's a, a common kind of problem solving strategy within this chapter. So there we are. That's the answer for uh, question 3 and question 7 from the uh, exercise 4b. Your turn to have a go at a few of the questions from exercise 4b. Pick out those exam questions, pick out the problem solving ones, challenge yourselves and uh, ask your teacher for help if you need any. And then I'll see you in exercise 4b. Thanks for watching.